And that was a perfect example right there. Uh, you know, you didn't have to you know, hit it out of the park there in the eighth inning. Can you kind of take us to that at bat and, you know, just uh, take us to that at bat there? Yeah. I mean, he's a tough lefty, that guy. It's not a good look for us. Um, he's coming from out here and stuff like that. But, um, you know, there's the pass ball, which changed the whole dynamic. This is why these little things in the game make such a big difference. Next thing you know, it's second and third. And I, I look over in the four hole and there's a gap about 100 feet. So at that point, I'm trying to roll right through that thing. That's exactly what I did. I didn't have to hit it too hard. I knew exactly what I had to do and I executed it. So that was that was it. Justin, go ahead. Mike, as you were going down the line, you kind of looked to your dugout and gave a little gesture. Do you hope this kind of eases everybody in? I mean, you, you guys needed a win tonight. Uh, the way that one played out, do you think that can relax some people, yourself included? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you get the first one out of the way. I said, now we can go. So we got that first one. It's time to roll now. So, yeah, I was just fired up for the guys, everybody. You know, we needed that. We had a tough weekend and stuff. So to come back was – it was a good feeling. It, from the sounds of, of David Pierce after the game on Monday, you guys are going to get right back to work. Uh, what was, you know, the mood like when you guys were able to get back on the practice field a little bit or get into the cage and do anything compared to last week when you guys couldn't do anything? Right. I mean, we were excited. Coach said it several times. It was a huge challenge to come back after that weekend and, you know, get back to work and work on some things. And we had a very productive day. And, I mean, it showed up today. We had a lot of barrels. Not all of them fell through, but we're headed in the right direction without a doubt. Joe, go ahead. Mike, what's this been like for you, just the whole transfer and coming from St. John's to here? What's that process been like for you, and how does it feel to, you know, be rewarded on this first night here playing an official game at the Dish? It's been a very easy process, to be honest with you. These guys did an unbelievable job bringing me in here, making me feel welcome, making me feel part of the team. They did it from the first day that I committed here. I mean, through the Zoom calls or whatever it may be, they got me right in the mix. So, I mean, it was an easy transition, and this is one of the greatest programs in the whole country. So, I mean, it's been nothing but a blessing for me. I, I love every moment here. When, when kind of was that moment where you knew, like, okay, I'm, I'm in. I, this is my group. This is my family now. When was that, like, clear for you? I would say as soon as I showed up, I met, you know, a handful of guys. And, you know, we clicked. It's, it's, it's easy to tell when you're going to have good relationships with guys. And, you know, we have a tight-knit group. And, uh, you know, we hang out often. We all love each other. It's a – it's a great group of guys. So, I mean, as soon as I sh showed up, I knew that it was going to be special. Danny, go ahead. Like as one of the, as one of the older guys in the team, even though you're new, you're one of the older guys, you know, how have you been able to step up leadership wise with your voice? Uh, Zach uh, in the, during the preseason said, you know, you're one of the guys that he considers a leader, even though you're new, how have you been able to step up in that area? You know, I, I really try to lead by example, um, I come in, I show up every day and I go about my business. I, I do my work. If practice is at four, I'm probably here at one or two o'clock. I like getting here early. I like getting my work in. So, you know, I try to lead by example. I try to talk to the younger guys. They, they like to come to me from time to time and ask me about things. And I just say, you know, there's no secret to this stuff. You got to show up every day and you got to put in the work and, you know, it might not show up right away, but eventually it will. And that's what I've learned throughout my career. Any other follow-ups for Mike? Great. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Mike. Hang tight. We'll have uh, Coach Pierce in a second here. All right, you got one guy from Jersey and you got one guy from Texas, so it's going to sound a little different. <laughs> Talk real fast for us, Coach. You want to start yeah. it off with some comments? We'll go to questions. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I'll just say that, you know, real pleased with Pete getting out there and competing, getting in, in a competitive rhythm. I think he's behind right now on his PFPs and his picks. Um, and I just addressed that with him and, 
but I was really pleased with his command that he hasn't really had, um, but he, he hasn't had it just because he hadn't been out there enough, but um, I liked what I saw from him. Drew Shifflett was really good in a bridge tonight. The one thing about him, I think um, he's a, a very good athlete that is innately a very good strike thrower. And, you know, we got to stay focused and stay ahead of hitters, even though I think his numbers were pretty good. When he would lose it mentally, it was just, you know, 3 1, 3 0, just like that, and then get right back in there. And so we got to eliminate those types of laps. And, you know, Cole battled really well. I didn't think he had his best stuff. And um, it was pretty flat tonight, to be honest with you, his fastball. But I like, I like his demeanor right now and what he's doing. And he's going to get there. We got to clean up some things with him. And I thought Tanner was outstanding in the night. Um, Offensively, I thought we made some improvements. We're still a long ways away. Uh, we still got to continue our play discipline. And we've got to, you know, get into a flow of our offense, which it's hard to do when we're not getting enough leadoff hitters on base. So, you know, a little bit better discipline, but a much better uh, feel about our guys as far as their mentality. Uh, I really liked uh, Easton Walker. Uh, and not, the thing I liked about him is that you – he had such a competitive mindset. He attacked the strike zone, um, and he threw two to three pitches for strikes throughout the night. But, you know, you got to tip, tip your hat to him as well. But I'm just fortunate we won the game. Hey, Dustin, start us off. David, you had a, a different view uh, for most of this game tonight. I won't ask you about that conversation that got you there, but – uh, what improvements did you see from your guys offensively? I mean, cut down the strikeout, seemed to put the ball in play uh, much better than this past weekend. Well, I think we hit two balls up the middle, really three balls up the middle, really hard. One of them, uh, Walker got lucky on the on the toe tap. Uh, two of those balls, I think, were Eric's. And then um, another line drive up the middle with great positioning by them on, on Cam Williams. But, you know, Hitting's tough, and I like the fact that we worked on some things yesterday and they came out today, and, and that's, to me, progression. Um, I, know they, I know they listen. I know they want to be good, and they're going to put the time in. So just prioritizing the work as opposed to just going and swinging and hitting. Because we, we hit a lot yesterday, but we didn't, you know, go bananas on it. We just – kind of identified each individual and then went to work on that. One of the things consistently is laying off the high fastball. And I, I thought Walker threw a lot of them that we did a good job of laying off of. And then we had some, I thought were really borderline and we laid off and they called against us. And then we let it affect our at bat. So we got to get mentally tougher when we're in the box. And before we create some type of fear in a pitcher's, um, mentality of thinking that he has to make better pitches we've just got to have results and we've got to be bigger in the box we've got to be better in the box to put more pressure on the defense and and make the pitcher work much harder than they're working right now uh what's what's going on with austin right now and i don't know if you can add anything about dj and zach i mean do you anticipate getting those guys back anytime soon are they going to be away from a while yeah, those two are just not available right now. and um, We could have some good news in the next 24 hours. We're not sure. Uh, as far as Austin, game two, when he made the throw from right, kind of shredded his oblique. And so it's pretty painful right now. And he's going to be on the shelf for probably most of this weekend, if not all of this weekend or this week. He's, gotta, he's just got a strain oblique. Danny, go ahead. Uh, David, I'm just going to plead ignorance on this, but the Cam Williams homer to center, is that a new rule about the batter's eye, or what is the rule on that one? Okay, for many years, the batter's eye, you had to clear, and then we added the extension because of the new softball facility. So the extension is about 12 to 15 feet higher, maybe not that high, but I think the wall itself is 35-plus feet. And so at that point, I'm like, it's just unfair to a hitter to hit the ball that 
far and not get rewarded for it. And the craziest thing happened tonight. It's the first time in a ball game since I've been here that I've seen a ball hit that uh, batter side the very first time. And he actually hit the new section. So it would have cleared it. Um, and it would have been a shame if that was a double because he absolutely hammered that ball. I mean, you hit a ball that well. That's what upset me so much with the home run down the line is that you should get rewarded when you hit a ball like that, and it's fair. And tonight, is this the mic that you guys have been seeing all fall? Um, you know, the home run that wasn't, and obviously his eighth inning uh, heroics? No, oh, I think there's – you're going to still see more. I think that's touching the surface. Um, you know, even though he's an older kid, I mean, there's – He's, he's felt some pressure like everyone else. And I, I was really proud of him after his first at bat striking out and then coming back and having a pretty good night. But yes, I mean, he's a fun kid to, to put in the lineup. He's a great teammate. He, you know, he, just, he wants to play ball. Joe, go ahead. David, when you were in the dugout, did you sense that the guys had made the improvements that you wanted to see, or it, maybe not with the on-field stuff, but just the, you know, being active in the dugout, being involved in the game? Did you see that they may have improved in that regard from this past weekend when you were in the dugout with them? I, I didn't notice a difference because I thought that was pretty good. We just didn't have much to cheer about or much to really get excited about. I think, uh, you know, we're not going to be a team that's over the top rah rah, but at the same time, I want guys paying attention to the game and, and learning from the game, and not only from us or what the game brings us, but for from from opponents. and And so we try to use that as a little bit of a lab where you know you get excited for your teammates, but you need to pay attention because you can learn something from the other guys. Uh, yeah. And, and then a little bit different. Um, when do you think that uh, Pete will be back to normal? Maybe not, you know, 100%, but kind of more of what you're accustomed to seeing from him. I hope next week, you know. He, he, it's the first time. I mean, he actually hit exactly the number we were hoping for, 50 pitches. And if he would have had some stress situations, it probably would have been max 60. But at the time of him ending that third inning, and where he was, we just felt like it was the right time to move on. But I, I really do. I think he's getting closer. You know, the thing is, is that it's not only pitching, but you saw him rusty building his position. You saw him rusty on his pitch. And so he's just got to get into competition and get a little bit more uh, active doing that on the side in his side work. Got one last one, Danny. Go ahead. David, in the, in the overall series, looking forward to these next three days, are you expecting to use a lot of lineups, a lot of guys, um, you know, since it is, you know, whatever it is, seven games in eight days? Um, or are you – is this just training the guys and get that stamina up? I'm going to use the guys that give us the best chance to win. And we have some young players and some other players that do give us a, a great chance to win, so we will utilize them. But uh, I'm not going to play guys just to play them. I mean, that's what practice is for and earning spots. Um, but there's a lot of guys that are deserving and can fill in in some, some spots. You know, there's some things that happen that I was disappointed in that we've got to clean up. And it has nothing to do with, you know, well, it does have something to do with the outcome. But I don't want any hesitation on the field. And I felt like D.C. was hesitant on – um, the chance of doubling up the runner at first on the lazy pop-up. And he was, he was really reserved about making that throw. And um, I thought between Cy and Ivan, we were very hesitant on the back pick. If, if we come up, snap, throw, and throw it, he's probably out. And then I have to look and double check, but I can't imagine that Cam Williams had a very good break on the fastball. And so you got to be in a real good position or you don't go. But the key is, you are always in a good position. Uh, so those are the types of things. The hesitation makes me think that they're still playing a little tentative. And that's, to me, what I want to see cleaned up. If we make a physical mistake, I want to do it at 100%. I don't want to do it from 
you know, any type of uh, reservation of, you know, a what if I make a bad throw or what if I make a running decision, a poor running decision. I thought Cam did a really good job on extending the, the single into a double. I mean, off the bat, that's got to be a double. And, and I, I'm really pleased that he did that. That's what we need there. But, yeah, so, I mean, we got some really good guys. I like our depth, it, um, some versatility in there. But you also want to see some guys that you feel like your starting lineup is your starting lineup to have some success so they can build off of that as well. So we want to try to insert those guys at the right moments.